Hello and welcome to the VJCL. This is a wonderful experience. I wish I could have uh, been in person this year. Today we'll talk about how important Latin is and the doors it can open. And uh, my name is Victor Lawani. So a little bit about myself. I am currently 24 years old. I'm a first year med student. I have eight years of Latin experience divided between high school and college. I do have a bachelor's in classical studies, which includes Latin, some Greek, art history, and classical history. Uh, for those of you wondering, yes, I do have a science bachelor's too in uh, biochemistry. Latin did help me very heavily in my science field, and there's just a lot of words that um, we'll go through that can be broken down into Latin roots. Along with that, you'll see that I, um, I've done some research in wastewater sewage and animal studies, including cell work and um, surgeries as well. So you might be wondering, why the wastewater sewage treatment? So that actually was a door that opened for me after I graduated from Virginia Tech. Um, I actually was like, let me go see if I can just get an internship um, right afterwards. And I actually started the week after I graduated. And the door that actually got me in wasn't my... Um, my grades or my resume in particular, it was the Latin. Um, the professor was very interested that I had done um, so many years of Latin and was just, you know, it set me apart from the other people. Like, you know, I may, I may have a good GPA and I may have other research experience, but not particularly in that field of choice. But they thought the Latin would be very useful and it just made me look more unique. So for those of you that don't have Latin on your resume, I'd recommend putting it on there. Um, the other professor at Virginia Tech where I did the animal studies research also saw that I did Latin and um, thought it might be very helpful just to have it there. So I know many of our peers like to ask us and joke around, you know, why even take Latin? It's a dead language, right? And it is sort of a dead language. I would say it's dead in the aspect that we don't speak it, but you can learn a lot from it and we can still translate you know pretty much everything we still have and the other thing is it is um like i say here a gateway language so once you learn latin it is very easy to pick up other languages because well as long as they come from latin i will say chinese is a little bit harder mandarin in particular because grammar is so much different but you know spanish french you know um the other languages that have similar grammar um similar Maybe declension Spanish is pretty similar in that regard. And you'll start seeing that a lot of words are similar. And that's because, you know, Latin is the, the root language. Um, I know a lot of people always say, you know, higher test scores. Like, you're going to get such a high score on your SAT and ACT because you know Latin. And the answer is, yes, it can help you. But it really just depends on how much you can retain and if you can really just break down each word you don't know. And again, we'll have some examples on that in a little bit. Um, the long-term examples I would say would be um, grad school, especially when you start um, when you start thinking about the GRE, the MCAT, the was it the LSAT and the GMAT. Those are all um, tests you have to take to get into your certain grad school program of choice. In particular, I had to take the MCAT to get into med school. I would say 100% it helped me out, just because you know there were a lot of words that are very very big, but are just mainly roots to or Latin roots, prefixes, and um, suffixes that you can just look at and be like, oh, um, like one example we'll go through later is suni, pseudo unipolar. And you just think to yourself, oh, pseudo, it's like not genuine or fake. Uni is one, and then polar is pole. So then you think, oh, um, okay, so it's a fake one pole. Uh, in this case in particular, it's a neuron. So once you break it down, you're like, okay, I know what this word is. I can assume what it looks like because there's only a few types of neurons that we really get to learn. Um, we don't really know everything about uh, neurology quite yet. This is actually my favorite part. So how does Latin relate to the modern world? So like I said, Latin is considered dead, but it really isn't. And um, I'll show you some images later on that you might you might be able to understand how it's not dead. So my biggest example will be for all those people that are Harry Potter fans, you know that they they say Latin for the spells. So that's just one common example. Um, a lot of documents we have and you know statues around the world will just have like a small plaque in front of them and it'll be in Latin. And you know I highly recommend if you all ever get the chance to go to Europe and just get to explore it. Rome, um, Italy and Greece in particular 
there's just a lot still out there that has survived. Um, the most famous examples would be the Colosseum, you know, uh, Delphi, because, you know, there was an oracle at Delphi. And another one that we tend to forget about is Pompeii. Uh, I know everyone goes, oh, when you go to Italy, you have to go to Rome. But if you get some time, go to Pompeii. You know, that is a very preserved site. It is very interesting to see what happened then and, like, how fast it would have happened because, you know, there's everyone's just preserved. All the housing was preserved. It's just very interesting. Um, and if you are interested, um, you can read The Natural Histories by Plutarch, I believe. And he goes in great detail of, you know, what was around in the modern or in the ancient world, and then you can compare it to the modern world. So his description of Pompeii was extremely accurate to what we can see now, and that's because it's so preserved. Um, when you look at um, the Latin and um, college diplomas, you'll see that some college diplomas are written almost entirely in Latin. And it's just very nice to have and also some of your friends might ask you you know do you mind translating this for me and you know you, you'll, you'll think about it and you may have to look up some words because some of the words aren't the most common but it's a nice fun exercise um, another thing is you'll think about is uh, what is your distinction when you graduate from high school and uh, college they'll say like summa cum laude you know cum laude and then you can translate and be like you know the highest honor distinction uh, versus just honor distinction and it, it's just small things that you don't think about every day that are Latin. Um, vice versa is a Latin um, phrase, you know, uh, versus is Latin, ad and um, ab in words. In my particular case, we're learning a lot about abduction or adduction, or we just say abduction and adduction. And that's just moving, you know, your body parts away from your body or closer to your body. So it's just stuff that you don't really think about or you'll think of um you know a, a lot of times if you watch politics right now they'll say you know quid pro quo and status quo and you know those are direct latin words um i would say that even though people will say latin has died out you can see a lot of influence um even now i think i taught uh, touch on later the architecture that's around here like if you go to dc you'll see you know massive massive buildings that are not only just the national mall but like sometimes you'll even see cathedrals in dc that look you know they have roman-esque elements to it and even though they may be highly inspired inspired by um you know religion and the context of like maybe the medieval era but there is a lot of latin elements in there so like i said we're going to break down some words and if you just think about it like these are words that some of the words you might know and then the last word i don't expect anyone to know so when you would think about it, you'd be like autobiography and you would just think to yourself, you know, autobiography. And it's like, what does all that mean? And it's like, you know, you, most people would know that auto is self, bio is life, and graffiti is writing. And the way I think of the, uh, the graffiti context is like graffiti. Graffiti is writing. And although it may be spelled differently, like you can understand like where that word might come from. And then, you know, biology, um, you know, life and then the study so it's the study of life. And you start thinking of like all these common endings on some of these like bigger words. Like, you know, anything with ology in it is gonna be study. Um, anything with graphy is it is writing. So like psychology is the study of the brain or, you know, the psyche, which psyche is actually uh, a Greek word. So you just start breaking down words and like for those of you that do go on to pick up maybe classical studies as a second major or maybe you want to take some greek as well once you understand you know basic greek words and basic latin words i feel like you can piece together any science word possible unless it's like super made up and what i mean by that is like you know pseudo unipolar uh pseudo is technically greek so i would not expect you to know pseudo um and then unipolar is again one and then pole so this is a type of neuron um, when you think of neurons in general you'll you'll think of like your normal you have a body and then it like branches off like like a long body um, and then just a bunch of branches at the end so this one's a little different where it has the body in the middle and then the two branches come off and then you get the smaller branches on both sides so this is again very different you don't have to know it so then we talk about the the vastness of greek and roman civilization so when looking at the Greek and Romans in particular, they were very widespread. Um, 
if you know about the Romans, we'll just go to the Roman Empire. Roman Empire spread, you know, as far as Britain, and they did go down to parts of the Middle East even. And, you know, we'll always say, you know, the Egypt. Egypt was one of their biggest strongholds uh, for a while, and then drama does happen between Caesar's family, which I'm sure your Latin professors may have told you about already. Uh, if you're interested, look up... Um, Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, and uh, Mark Anthony, and then Cleopatra. There's a, a lot of stories going on there and what happened and what didn't happen, but I digress. Um, so there is a lot of elements that do remain in our modern day world. And you may have noticed that, again, there's modern influence of like Latin and Greek in movies. There's also uh, our architecture, but what else has stayed? So we have actually gotten the actual stories that were written so so many years ago and if you think about it how does you know pieces of paper of like the person writing their story stay through time and that's because they were rewritten repeatedly after being published way back when uh scholars would rewrite it and it would be mass spread and even if it wasn't mass spread the christian monks that you know later in the holy roman empire started writing everything as well and those texts are regarded as maybe not sacred per se, but very important to their culture. So they would keep very good care of them and make sure they were in multiple places. So when you start getting texts that are this heavily protected, they do get to stand the testament of time, as long as war doesn't completely destroy every single place they were at, which we are, we believe that some pieces were destroyed in time and we don't have the whole pieces to some stories, but we, we have most of them and we can infer what we might be missing through the references to other um, authors referencing the piece. So there is this combining of cultures that starts to happen, and this is how we start getting the, the different languages that start arising from it. So you have Latin that starts influencing you know, Spain, and Spain um, starts using Spanish over time. And um, we have France that has you know, French. There's Italian, which I know some people might think that once you know Latin, you can figure out Italian pretty easily. They are a little different. Um, the vocab is very, very different. But once you understand certain things, like it, it does get a lot easier. Um, as far as the Romance languages go, I would say, you know, if you are, have interest, you only you don't want to take any more years of Latin. I would honestly encourage you to take another language. It's very helpful. You'll be surprised how fast you can pick up on other languages, especially if you're able to speak them as well. But Latin is still very useful. I, I don't want you to think it's not useful. And now for those of you that still may not believe me that Latin is uh, more influencing the modern day, there's this running gag in movies a lot where they will speak, you know, Latin or Greek or some type of ancient combination of both that may not actually exist. And they'll like summon demons or like random things in the movie. So these are just some memes that I found to be um, very, very funny. And, you know, I I'm not sure if you're familiar with the... Uh, the one on the left because that's you know blue eyes white dragon from Yu-Gi-Oh and that's uh, Jimmy's dad from uh, Jimmy Neutron some just older cartoons and then um, I just remember us joking a lot about in Latin class that you know if you don't decline properly and you know you're in high school so maybe sometimes you'll believe your professor on this but he was like you know if you maybe if you don't decline properly you might end up summoning something wrong and it was the running gag that we had in high school so. Um, and then the one on the right is, you know, this is how fancy you can make something sound like, you know, we're having chicken, but then, you know, it's actually Gallus Domesticus and you can even go as far to say it's like it's a descendant of the T-Rex. So you can make yourself sound really fancy here. Again, those for the, those of you that are sciencey people, I remember a lot of people saying like, you know, do you need to take Latin for science? And I'm like, you don't have to, um, it might help. So my base example will be the one on the right. Uh, I am going through anatomy right now. We have gone through all these muscles. And a lot of times, like, if you don't have any Latin, you won't know how to spell the words properly, or you'll miss, like, an E. You'll be like, latissimus? What? And then you'll be like, you won't get it. But, like, once you start breaking those words down, like, latissimus is actually, you know, superlative. So that's where the issy part comes in. Most is just the ending. And then you can start breaking it down. And then once there's... um you know, multiple muscles, and it, it there's even gets to be the plural, like, um, a foramen is a hole, like, in your spine, so that's where your nerves and your arteries and your veins can start going through, 
but plural of that is uh, formina. So then you start, you know, breaking words down and being like, oh, you know, brachii. That's plural because, you know, there's an I at the end. Um, I Although I haven't heard anyone ever say brachius, but it, it's possible. Um, the one on the left just shows you, you know, these are different species. They're not all humans, but they believe that, you know, this is how humans started out. This is how we ended up. And actually, they've gone as far to say is that we're homo homo sapiens now. So don't ask me why there's another homo there. It's just, I guess they, they wanted us to say, like, we're more unique than just regular homo sapiens because we've evolved. And some of our fingers and organs are changing, too. Like, I know not a lot of people, they're saying that your your pinky toe is shrinking and they may not be there. And then maybe your uh, appendix doesn't really have the best function. But we're learning that it actually does do stuff. It's just not the most significant. And then some more things is um, the calendar, which I forgot to mention earlier. So my biggest examples will always be um, July is by uh, Julius. And I don't think it's actually on. Yeah, it is on this calendar at the very right one. Augustus um, actually edited it. So we end up changing um, Quintilius to, you know, Julius and Sextilius to Augustus. And they... You know, you can see the influence in the modern day. So, like, you know, March is in there. April is in there. Um, you can see from September onwards, it's kind of just supplied there. But, like, February, January. So, there is a lot of influence in the calendar and the amount of days that was in the calendar to modern day. So, some of it does change. And they did have um, a mechanic for leap year, it seemed. But I'm not going to go into detail about that. So, I, I remember... Like, in very early Latin, they're always about, you know, your teachers will always say declensions, 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 endings, verb endings, like, I need you to conjugate all this, and you'll, you'll start thinking, like, why? But once it becomes second nature to you, you start getting all these words in your head, and you once you know what declension a word is, which is very easily um, able to find out, you can still use, I believe, uh, William Whitaker's words, if you Google that, and it's basically an online dictionary, you can Google any word, in there, or I guess search any word in that website, and they will give you the declension or the conjugation and some information, multiple definitions about the word. And it just saves you some time from like going in your dictionary and having to look things up. I still encourage you to use your dictionary because sometimes you won't have the internet. I know, shocking, uh, 2020, you won't have the internet, but there are moments where you may not have the internet, the power's out, and you may have a homework assignment that you have to get done for the next day, and your chancing of will you have school or not. And since we're an online school, I, I would highly recommend doing your homework because there's no uh, my, my power was out type of thing. Your professor might be like, well, you have a Latin dictionary. You could have just translated it. You don't need the internet. Um, it's true. It's We don't need it, but it would just be nice. Um, and I keep referring to STEM because that is where I am. Um, I know a lot of my friends are uh, starting law school now as well, and they're saying how important it is in their writing, um, especially in English in general. Like if you're an English major, it helps with your writing too. So Latin is a very diverse field for how much it can impact and influence you. So again, I recommend you know taking what you know and applying it if you can. And I know it's not gonna be easy, uh, easily applicable your first two years, uh, especially when you know like, you know, Canus and Wea, like, you know, the dog is in the road, which is not the most applicable. And then when you start going a little bit further and reading stuff about like, you know, Caesar and, like, war, you'll be like, w why do I have to know how this person died? Like, why do I have to know that this person got speared in the heart? And, like, it just, some of it doesn't make sense to you, but then you start realizing, like, you know, a lot of Roman stuff that's written down is history, and, unfortunately, the Romans were constantly at war. So that's why they have so much war-based things. And But some of your professors will teach you, you know, the basic openings, um... I still remember my professor used to tell me, um, make us ask to go to the bathroom in Latin. So, and, you know, it was on a, a piece of paper, so you always had it. But, like, you know, once you started saying it more and more, like, you'll, you'll start remembering the words and the phrases. And if you want, you can start speaking Latin with your classmates. Like, I encourage it. You might retain it more if you're that type of person. If not, you know, it's just something fun to have and you just get influenced. So... In closing, I would say, you know, I'll leave you with my favorite line by Horace, which is uh, Carpe Diem, which I'm sure you guys have heard of, uh, is Seize the Day. Um, it has a very big modern context, which some people have told me is, uh, you know, YOLO, you only live once. 
but I would say seize the day and, you know, Carpe Diem is a little bit different, you know, I don't think he was trying to refer it in that context of you only live once, you know, do whatever you want, but I, I highly recommend that, you know, as you go out through your journey, um, through Latin and through life, uh, one thing I will always remember is the amount of Latin authors that really just give you all the messages of how to empower you, and they really tell you how much power you really have over your life. I mean, especially now in 2020 versus, you know, way back when, when you had an emperor that forced you to write, you know, the Aeneid, and if you didn't finish it, then, you know, he would not be very happy, or if he didn't like one of your pieces, you know, you maybe get beheaded. So definitely more freedom in 2020. So, like, just remember that you aren't alone. Uh, rely on others when you need it. You know, when you need help and motivation, people are there for you. You're never alone. There's always someone you can go to, someone you can talk to. Um, even if that person is your Latin professor. Like, I'll be honest, when I was having difficulty in school, I would go to my Latin professor. We, we'd chat about things that wasn't Latin related. Like, you know, teachers are there to help you as well. Your peers are there to help you. So don't be afraid of the challenges. You know, as you grow, you'll find that, like, everyone has or everyone will go through similar challenges. So... You know, just talking to your friends, like, you know, my biggest example was moving away to college. I moved four hours away. It's a very different area. I didn't know anyone. But again, a lot of my classmates were like that. A lot of us had moved away. Some people came as far as Japan. Um, my roommate my freshman year was from China. So he didn't speak a lot of English. And then he ended up learning English. And now he can speak, I think, four languages. So, you know, you use language is one of the things that, like, you learn and you get to really communicate with people. So... Don't think that, you know, just because you don't speak Latin, it's not as impactful. I hope I've given you some examples of how it can be. And, you know, just take one day at a time. You know, there will be challenges. You'll be terrified of the tests that are coming up the next day. But, I mean, in the long run, when you start working your career and figuring out what you want to do and who you are, um, you'll look back on it and be like, oh, yeah, I did take that much Latin. And it's like, I remember uh, learning about, you know, Horace or uh, Virgil and talking about the Indian Aeneid and, the messages that they would send and you know that's it, it is useful I, I do need to just think about this one day at a time you know calm down like still have a long-term goal but like don't freak out if you don't meet that goal in time so for those people that are overachievers in general and are thinking about you know very long-term careers if you don't get into grad school right after undergrad it is okay like honestly taking a year or two off to go travel and like you know really learn the world and learn more about yourself or just get some experience and save up some money as well it's like, there's no right path to your end goal. It's whatever you want to do and how you want to get there. So I, I know one thing that um, I have talked to my Latin high school professor from for many times was, you know, I want to go to med school. And I ended up, you know, taking two, two years gap years and working in my, uh, my home city in the hospital. And I was a nursing assistant. So it's now... It was medically related, but it's not me going to school right away. It's not me finishing and becoming a doctor right away. So, but there is no, there's no real deadline for it. Like, you know, there's no rush to get to be in your dream career. Like, you know, live your life, enjoy it as you can. So I like, I know a lot of high school um, programs used to be, you, you get to go to Rome and you get to go to like, you know, parts of Italy and parts of Greece. Like if you have the money for it, you know, go for it. If you don't, you know, maybe try to set something up later in the future. Like, I know colleges will go on those trips. I personally haven't been on those trips yet, but I'm planning that, you know, if I get some time in between um, residency and after med school, I'm going to go to Italy and, um, and, well, most of Europe, but Italy and Greece in particular, because I would like to see those sites. And I know a lot of you will, will think about the, the most famous moment in Roman history probably is uh, Caesar getting assassinated. And you know, you could actually go and see where the forum was. And although not all of it survives, you know, some of it does. And you'll be like, oh, they, they really just did it in, like, broad daylight. And, you know, these are just common things. And uh, more examples of how Latin relates to us is um, we have a Senate. And, you know, the Romans had a Senate. And, you know, we have this uh, kind of checks and balances um there was a triumvirate at one point in roman times so like people start making that comparison but again that's more politics than i want to talk about but like you can see the influences of you know the romans and how well they balance power before um the empire and before we start having emperors compared to now where like you know we have these checks and balances you know where it's very 
we elect the people. It's very democratic versus, you know, Spartans where it was like, you know, strongest gets to pretty much rule. So, and then Athens is more of a democracy as well. So that was both in Greece. So you just start seeing these things and you start thinking to yourself like, you know, how much um, influence do I have over my life? And honestly, you have a lot. Um, and I would really recommend if you want to read someone on your own, uh, I would recommend Horace. Horace has a lot of, um, you know, very impactful messages that he says in his pieces. And if you're looking for more, definitely ask your, um, your high school professors or your college professors. If you don't know for sure, you can Google Horace and see his works and like some main messages. And maybe you don't want to translate all of it, but like you can translate like the famous sayings that they might have. Um, and I think that's all I have here.